let's take a look at recognizing harassment. It is clear that not all harassment can be linked to protected class in the manner required to prove discrimination. We need to step back and consider more carefully the kinds of behaviors that constitute harassment. The EEOC has defined sexual harassment as follows. Unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature when one of the following conditions is present. Submission to such conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment. Submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as a basis for employment decisions affecting such individual. Such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive working environment. A distinction can be drawn between harassment that results in tangible employment actions and harassment that alters working conditions by subjecting employees to hostile environments but does not affect tangible employment outcomes. This distinction is important because the criteria for finding employers liable differ depending on which of these two types of harassment has occurred.